Good morning, students. Today we have to discuss the second part of the chemical control and coordination. This chemical control and coordination is a part of the control and coordination, and we have discussed in previous lectures neural control and coordination, and the second part of the chemical control and coordination, and that is the thyroid and adrenaline. Just we have observed that uh, the thyroid is located both the side of the trachea and they have thyroxine. That is the T3 and T4 and they are mainly responsible for the controlling our BMR, that is the subjective metabolic rate. And uh, in case of the adrenal gland, we have discussed that the adrenal gland is attached on the kidney and it is triangular in structure. And having two parts, that is the uh, cortical part and medullary part. The outer cortical part is responsible to release corticoids, and there are three types that is the mandalocorticoids, saxocorticoids, and glucocorticoids. And in addition to that, the Medullary part release that is the emergency gland, emergency part of the gland, and they are responsible to release the nephrine and epinephrine. Now, <coughs> today we will have to discuss the master of the master gland. Master gland. Firstly, master gland. It is called pituitary. It is called pituitary. And that is mainly present in the cranium. It has been observed that their structure is like this. Like this. This is the anterior lobe. This is the Posterior lobe and this one is the intermediate lobe of the pituitary. This anterior lobe is called adenohypophysis and this posterior lobe is called neurohypophysis. Neurohypophysis. Why it is called master of the master gland? Yeah, master gland because they are responsible to control the activity of the certain glands by their own hormone. And due to that, their most of the hormones are called trophic hormones. We will have to make a list of the hormones which will be released from the anterior lobe of pituitary. Number one, that is the growth hormone. Growth hormone. It is mainly responsible for the growth of the baby. Growth of the Newborn baby or the just growing baby, and they are also responsible for the growth of the parts, internal parts of the body. If the growth hormone is hyper in growing age of the boy or girl. Then it causes zygotism. In this case, the height is abnormal, and it has been observed the limb bones or the tall bones, the growth of the tall bones are very much rapid. And if the this Particular growth hormone is hypo. Hypo means less than requirement. 
that is called dwarfism. Dwarfism. But both these diseases are in growing age. If a person is not in growing age, it means they are adult and they have still hyper insecretion, then that is called acromegaly. Acromegaly. In this case, it has been observed that the skull limbs are mainly grown, and in this case, the limbs become weak. So, this is the first hormone that is called growth hormone and they are responsible for the growth of the growing baby or if they are hyper that is also the growth of the and it has been observed that if at certain age their secretion is minimized their secretion is controlled by the hypothalamus now next hormone is the hyro Propane, thyroid stimulating hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone. As you have discussed that the thyroid gland is present both the side of the trachea and they have follicles and that follicles are responsible for the retaining the TSH, T3 and T4. The amount of that particular secretions are directly controlled by the pituitary and that is under the control of the thyroid stimulating hormone. It means you can say that they indirectly BMR is under the control of the pituitary and that controlling hormone is the TSH. Of course, if you will say that the thyroid, uh, which hormone is responsible for the controlling the BMR, then that is T3 and T4. But the secretion of T3 and T4 is under the control of the TSH. So, we can say that the BMR is the indirectly under the control. Now, next hormone is the adrenocorticotropic trophic hormone. We have discussed that the cortex region of the adrenal gland is responsible to release corticoids. And uh, this corticoids, the release of the corticoids, the how many amount and uh, what quantity of the corticoids will be should be released from the adrenal that is under the control of the ACTH. So we can say that the adrenal cortex is also under the control of the pituitary. So here it is also master gland for the adrenal gland. Now Next hormone is the follicle stimulating hormone. Follicle stimulating hormone. It is in male called ICSH, that is interstitial <coughs> cell. Stimulating hormone. FSH is responsible to release maturation of the of graphene follicle. Which is still present in the ovary of the female. And after getting a certain age, that is the age of puberty, after getting the age of the puberty, 
this FSH start to release and the menstrual cycle becomes started in case of the male. But in case of female, that is called ICSH, that is called interstitial cell stimulating hormone and that interstitial cell stimulating hormone is responsible for the starting the formation of sperm. Formation of sperm. So this is one of the gonadotropin, gonadotropic hormone which will be released from the now, LH, that is called luteinizing hormone. Sorry, ICSH is another name of luteinizing hormone. And here the FSH is responsible for the, this ICSH is called interstitial cell stimulating hormone, is responsible for formation of testosterone, testosterone and they are responsible for the maturation of the male that is the formation of the secondary sex characters. But in case of the follicle stimulating hormone, in male it is called, uh, it is responsible for the initiation of the formation of sperm and in female it is responsible for the maturation of the graphene follicle. Again I am just discussing, follicle stimulating hormone is responsible for the maturation of the graphene follicle in female and starting the production of sperm or you can say that they are responsible to control the production of the formation of the sperm FSH in male and here it is responsible for the uh, maturation of the graphene follicle but in case of luteinizing hormone which is in male called ICSH this luteinizing hormone is also going to protein and they are responsible for ovulation in female. Ovulation in female and production of the uh, testosterone in male. This is the two names of this particular. Now, Prolactin. It is also a hormone and that is mainly responsible for the growth of the mammary gland and formation of the milk or the storage, increase the storage of the milk of the mammary gland and the formation of milk after maturation. And that is also only present in the female. This is all about the six hormones present in the anterior lobe of pituitary. Now, posterior lobe of pituitary is responsible to release ADH. ADH. This hormone we have discussed in the excretion. It is also called vasopressin. And the ADH that is called anti-diuretic hormone. This hormone is mainly responsible for controlling our uh, osmotic pressure of the body. Whenever the uniformation will take place, after filtration, granular filtration, when the glomerular filtrate start to move in the PCT, loop of phenol and DCT, then ultimately it will convert into urine. During this particular phase, this hormone is responsible to control the 
quantity of water and minerals inside the blood. So okay, we you can say that the, it is mainly responsible for the controlling our osmotic pressure. And one another hormone that is called oxytocin. It is also called birth hormone. Or it is also called milk exacting hormone. This oxytocin is responsible for milk ejection. Whenever a baby kick their if the nipple of your, their mother, the pituitary start to release oxytocin and they make a pressure upon the mammary gland to release, to eject the milk, the stored milk. Protecting is responsible for the storage of the milk or the formation of the milk. And this is responsible for the ejection of the milk. So without this particular oxytocin, if milk is stored in the mammary gland, that they can't come out. And that is called ejection of ejecting milk ejection. And at the time of birth, at the time of parturition, the abundance of the oxytocin is released from the pituitary and they make a pressure on the uterus for the birth of the baby. So these are the two. Now, one another hormone is also released from the pituitary that is called MSH. M S H. It is called melanocyte stimulating hormone. Melanin pigments coloration of the body is mainly under the control of this MSH. And that is present in the intermediate lobe of the pituitary. It is very much developed in the amphibians, spices. It is so not so much developed in the case of human. Now Next gland is a master of master of master gland and that is called hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. It is also present inside the brain case and they release two types of hormones. One is called releasing hormone and another is called inhibiting hormone. Releasing hormone and inhibiting hormone. So most of the hormone which will be released from the master gland will be under the control of this hypothalamus. Just like you will see that the first uh, hormone that is called GH. Growth hormone. And it is of two types. GH RH and GH IH. GH RH means growth hormone releasing factor or growth hormone releasing hormone. Growth hormone inhibiting hormone or growth hormone inhibiting factor. Just we have told you previously that uh, the after certain age the growth, the release of the growth hormone is minimized. Or after getting a proper growth of particular part of the body, the growth hormone for that particular part of the body is inhibited. So it is, it is very much essential that the releasing and inhibiting should be controlled in the particular organ and that is hypothalamus. So one hormone that is releasing hormone, another that is and one of the examples that is the GH, that is the growth, releasing hormone and growth, inhibiting hormone. TSH. RH. ICSH. IC Adrenocorticotrophic hormone, releasing hormone. ACTH, 
Gonadotropin releasing hormone. Productin releasing hormone and inhibiting hormone. And MSH. MSH releasing hormone and inhibiting hormone. Just we have observed here that the certain hormones are only releasing type. And certain hormones are releasing as well as inhibiting. So growth hormone releasing inhibiting, prolactin releasing inhibiting, MSH releasing inhibiting, MSH is melanocyte stimulating hormone, prolactin they are responsible for the formation of the milk, GnRH that is called gonadotropin that is responsible for the sexual character so the sex activities and ACTH and TSH ACTH adenocorticotropic hormone releasing hormone TSH thyroid stimulating hormone releasing hormone so overall we can say that the, this hypothalamus is called master of the master gland because they are responsible for the controlling the master gland certain part of the master now this is one of the chemical control and coordination of the human being or the animal. Now we will make a simple data about the phytohormones and that is of the five types. Just yeah, here students. Now uh, it is the time to discuss about the phytohormone. Yes, we have discussed the uh, hormones secreted from the secreted in the animals. Now it is the phytohormone. And in first uh, part of this particular lecture when we are discussing about the glands we have discussed that the hormones are released from the endocrine gland but you can say that there is no any such type of endocrine gland in the case of plant but still it is called hormone because their function is like hormone they have no endocrine function they, can't, they, they have no blood stream system uh, that plant will not carry that particular hormone in the different part of the um, different part of the plant through the blood stream because blood is not there blood stream system is not there of course they have conducting system but that will not carry that is not responsible to carry the, this hormone but their functions are resemble with that of the hormone so it is called phyto this phytohormone is mainly two types. One that is growth promoting hormone. Growth promoting hormone. And number two that is growth inhibiting hormone. And it has been observed that the certain hormones are responsible to perform both the function. So that is called dual functioning hormone. Now, the first hormone that is called oxygen, it is very much important hormone in the plant system because they are responsible for the cell elongation whenever the radical convert into root system. They have the cell division part, they have cell elongation part and they have cell maturation part. So this elongation part is controlled under this particular oxygen. The movement of the plant is also controlled by the oxygen. So we can say that the cell elongation and cell movement. It has been observed in an experiment that when, suppose this one is the green stem, juvenile stem. And there is a solar light from this region. It has been observed there is a movement of this particular part. Now, it is a phototropic movement. But I am just telling here that the oxygen is responsible for the movement. An experiment is again performed by detopping of this particular it had been seen that this particular part is detopped. And whenever the sunlight is here, there is no any movement. In third experiment, it had been seen that when this particular 
the top part and this part will be filled by the JD. Whenever this auxin is come in contact with this one, then again movement will take place. Here two things are confirmed. One, the auxin is responsible for the movement, and other auxin is restricted in this particular way. Not in the mature. So we can say that the auxin is here, and it has been seen that the, due to this particular vital function, the synthetic hormone is also the natural hormone is called indole indole acetic acid, and so many indole butyric acid, and others. There are many more. Synthetic oxygen has been prepared in the laboratory by the different scientists and they are responsible for the performing different functions. Secondly, root formation. During totipotency or the tissue culture, it has been observed when the plantlets are formed. When the mass of the cells are formed from the single cell, then the routing for the routing, the oxygen quantity will be increased and they are responsible for the formation of root. Respiration is also under the control of the oxygen and the branching of the plant will also under the control of the oxygen because the apical dormancy, it has been seen that the apical bulbs will be dormanted and the lateral branches will be due to the abundance of the, due to the formation of the oxygen. Now, second is the gibberellin. This gibberellin is also very important and it is also growth promoter. It is growth promoter. Just we have told that the, there are five different types of hormones and we will discuss that the oxygen, gibberellin and cytokinin. All three are growth promoter. Oxygen, this ethylene is growth promoter as well as growth inhibitor. So the, they will they are responsible to inhibit the certain part of the plant, the growth of the certain part, part of the plant. So it is called inhibitor also. So it is called it has dual function and it is completely growth inhibitor. So now the gibberellin, gibberellin is also responsible for the growth of the stem. They are responsible for the fruit yield. They are responsible for the flowering of the plant. And these hormones are very much important in case of the uh, at least uh, um, flowering plant, the angiospermic plant, because the fruit and fruit and these flowers are under the control of this company. Formation, not ripening. Now, in case of the cytokinin, we know that the growth will be take place due to two factors. One, the number of increase the number of increase of cell under that the elongation of the that particular cell. So here we will see that the elongation is controlled by the oxygen and the number of cell increasing is controlled by the cytokinin. So the cytokinin and oxygen both are responsible for the growth. Differentiation if the cell will be divided and they will not differentiate then what happens? The only mass of the cells will be the rooting, shooting, flowering, fruiting will not take place. So, this particular cytokinin is very much essential for the formation of the different development of the different part of the plant living because differentiation is responsible for the conversion of that particular epithelium mm, that cells into the different form. Prevention of the sensors. This cytokinin is also responsible for the increasing the uh, survival of the plant. Ethylene. Here we have seen that the promote the transverse growth. There are two types of growth. One is responsible for the girth, another is responsible for the length. For the girth it is very much responsible. It means this ethylene is responsible uh, very much functional at the time of the second growth. Senescence and abscission of the flower, flowers and leaves. This is the second function. This is the growth promoting, this is the growth inhibiting. So it is dual in nature. 
Dormancy of the rhizome. It has been observed the certain rhizome and bulb after getting a maturation. It start to form bud. Just like in the case of the ginger, in the case of the potato, you can observe that at the certain time they become, they form the buds, and that bud is responsible for their reproduction, and that budding is under the control of the ethyl. Abscessic acid is the entirely growth inhibiting hormone, and this growth inhibiting hormone mainly promotes the ripening of the fruits, promotes the sense and sense. Mainly very much important role in the annual plant where the plant complete their life cycle within one season just like in the case of the wheat, in the case of the rice. It means this abscession, this abscessic acid is responsible for this one. Ethylene is also responsible, ethylene is a gaseous hormone and they are responsible for the ripening of the fruits. They are responsible for the senescence and abscession and they are responsible for the ripening. So overall, we can say that the, this type of phytohormones are responsible for the controlling the different activity of the plant. And their function is resembled to the animal hormone, so it is also called that. It is all about the control and coordination chapter. Now we will discuss, uh, we will meet in the next chapter that is the